So number 13 from paper one of the 2015 new hire. We've got this little graph here. It's an exponential. It's a shifted exponential. So it's going up three from where it should be. And the first thing is, here's a point on it. What's the value of b? That's the y coordinate. Well, that just means it should fit that equation. If you put one in for x, this thing should come out to be b. So straight away, I've got this. f of one should equal b, which means that, you don't need to write that down if you don't want to, 2 to the power 1 plus 3 equals b, which means b equals 5. Now for part b, you have to draw the graph of y equals the inverse function of x. Well, that simply means changing the y's into the x's, the answers into the input numbers, and the input numbers into the answers. You do that by reflecting it in the line y equals x. So it's going to end up looking like this. Now, we'll just put that y equals the inverse function of x. Just not sure if we meant to put any of these points in, because obviously that point would be there, and this point would be straight through to here. That would be the image of them. I'll just call them p dash and q dash. But what does it actually say? Well, it says that right down for part two. Write down the images of those two points. Well, straight away I know what P is. If P is 1, 5, that means that if I just call it P dash for the image, that will be the opposite way around, 5, 1. Now Q, I don't know straight away. But for Q, X is 0, which means Y will be, just follow the expression, 2 to the power 0 plus 3 which is 1, remember 2 to the power 0 is 1, that's 1 plus 3, which is 4. So Q is the point 0, 4. That means that its image, called the Q dash, would be 4, 0. So that's 4 along 0, and that's 0, 4. Now there's a part C. Part C says, R3, 11. Also fits this, that's right, 2 to the power 3 is 8, and plus 3 is 11. But, where would it be, not in that graph, because we know where it is, or in this image, where would it be in the graph of y equals 4 minus f of x plus 1? Now, there's two marks, so that'll be just one for each of the coordinates, I would presume. So you can either just interpret it geometrically, which says this. Turn it upside down, so the y coordinate becomes negative 11. Move it up 4, so negative 11 goes up to next, negative 7. And the part inside the bracket, which affects the horizontal movement, says shift it back 1. So if it was at 3, it's going to go to 2. So they are 2, negative 7. The working would be, this is the new y coordinate. The new y coordinate is 4 minus, and f stands for the original value, the old y. So y is going to be 4 minus the 11, which is negative 7. This is a bit more convoluted, because this says the value actually plot at a given x is the value that it used to have at x plus 1. So it's the value it used to have at, this is the new x plus 1. Wherever that comes to, you look up that value, that will be the old x. So that means the new x will be the old x minus 1. So that will be 3 minus 1, which is 2. It's a bit more convoluted. You probably just best remember it as go back 1. So there we go. And the big graph. Question 14 from the 2015 New Hire Paper 1. There's a circle here, but what it tells you about this circle is this circle cuts the coordinate axis at exactly three points. Now, how can that happen? Well, you have to carry out a geometrical investigation of it. Draw a picture. First of all, where's its centre? It centres at 6, 5. The negative of half, the negative of half. So drawing that circle in approximately 6 along, 5 up. That's the important bit. It goes 6 along but only 5 up. So what sort of circle could intersect the axis? Well, as it got bigger, it would hit the x-axis first because it's only 5 away. And then as it got bigger still, it would then hit the y-axis but cut twice. So it'd have to be a circle that just grazed the y-axis. It'd have to be a tangent to the y-axis. That way you'd have just the one point there but obviously since it's, it'll go beyond the 5 here, it'll cut that twice. So there's the condition. So what do I know about this circle then? 
Well, I know that its radius will be this distance here. Its radius will be exactly 6. So how do you get the radius from this equation here? Well, you get the radius squared from the square roots. I'll not put that in. From the coordinates of the centre squared minus the number at the end. And I know that the radius is 6. So that means I've got taking the k across. I've got k will be 6 squared plus 5 squared minus the radius squared, which is 6 squared. They'll cancel out, just leaving you with 25, and that's it, done.